Now in the next two videos we will be looking at irritant poisons specifically the non-metallic poisons but I wanted to classify the irritant poisons first in the introduction of this video. Irritant poisons resemble corrosives that is when corrosives are diluted they resemble irritant poisons. They mainly cause gastroenteritis and depressant effects. Now irritant poisons are mainly classified into organic and inorganic poisons and mechanical poisons. The inorganic poisons are further classified into metallic and non-metallic poisons while the organic that is they are derived from the living things so they are further classified into plants that is vegetables and animal poisons. In this video, we will be studying the first non-metallic poison that is uh, phosphorus. The next is iodine which is explained in the next video. Let's see what we have for phosphorus here. Now phosphorus it primarily exists in two forms. One form is crystalline and the other is amorphous. The crystalline form is white and it becomes yellow when it's exposed to air so it is also sometimes called yellow phosphorus it is easily oxidized so it is kept, uh, kept submerged in water to pre prevent ignition on air exposure and it forms dense fumes of phosphorus or phosphoric acid they are luminous of pale yellow uh, color and they have a garlic odor. The second form of phosphorus is red form or amorphous form. It is inert unlike the white form and it is not luminous. It is odorless and it produces no fumes and it is used in on the matchbox side mixed with powdered glass. Now let's see what sort of poison phosphorus is. Now when we have phosphorus poisoning we can see that the injuries that are caused are comparable to those of ischemia because there is diminished metabolism due to ischemia. It is a protoplasmic poison affecting cellular oxidation and thus leads to necrobiosis of the liver and other such organs. Now the phosphorus poisoning can be divided in on the time basis or exposure basis into two types acute phosphoric phosphorus poisoning and chronic phosphorus poisoning. Now in the acute phosphorus poisoning we basically have two phases of symptoms. One is the primary and the other is the secondary and in between them there is an interval of remission of about two to three days. Remission is the time period when the patient shows some uh, betterment but then the same symptoms are observed again in the secondary and much more. Now the primary phase of acute phosphorus poisoning uh, resembles the local irritant action on the GIT of the same of the acids that we studied about. It occurs in about two to six hours. There is burning pain in the stomach, esophagus, throat. There is intense thirst. There is frequent, uh, frequent gaseous belching. Nausea, vomit and diarrhea has garlic-like taste. Odor is perceived in the feces too. The luminous vomit which is stained with blood is diagnostic of phosphorus poisoning. All of these symptoms they last for one to two days. Either the patient collapses or has cardiac failure. If that is not the case then remissions are common after the bouts of uh, vomiting and diarrhea. In case of contact poisoning, the contact uh, areas 
show burns which show slow healing now after the remission period of 2 to 3 days there are secondary symptoms or secondary acute phosphorus poisoning is mainly due to the absorbed poison and its actions the main actions are on the liver and the kidney and the original symptoms which were seen in the primary acute poisoning return as well now initially the liver it causes enlargement and fatty degeneration called necrobiosis the abdomen is also enlarged due to liver necrosis and then later the liver shrinks in size and this condition is called the acute yellow atrophy of the liver now due to the liver damage and hypoprothrombinemia there is purpura and epi- epistaxis seen the cns or skeletal muscle effects are pain frontal pain insomnia tinnitus or ringing of the ears vision is disturbed paralysis or cramps are also experienced now priapism and pregnant uterus abortion is also a feature of secondary phosphorus poisoning and the color of the feces is pale not luminous like in the primary uh, poisoning let's see what chronic poisoning looks like chronic poisoning occurs when fumes are inhaled over years it uh, results in weakness weight loss jaundice and joint pain now there is a special condition of chronic phosphorus poisoning which is called forsy jaw it is basically the osteomyelitis of the bone with multiple sinuses discharging foul smelling pus Now let's see what the fatal dose and fatal period of phosphorus poisoning is. The fatal dose is about 60 to 120 mg, but if it is vomited out, the patient may recover and have less severe damages. The fatal period is about 24 hours in the acute poisoning and if it has um, after the remission the usual course is about 6 to 7 days or longer now for the treatment of acute phosphorus poisoning demulcents such as oil fa- fatty substances milk etc are contraindicated because they dissolve and promote further absorption of phosphorus gastric lavage with 5% KMnO4 or copper sulfate as an antidote should be done repeatedly till vomit occurs and the phosphorus is expelled now KMnO4 is basically a chemical antidote which reacts with phosphorus to form harm- harmless compounds such as phosphoric acid and phosphates iv saline should be given to combat shock and if there is hypocalcemia give calcium gluconate and to maintain the alkali reserve sodium bicarbonate is given IV dextrose is given for liver protection dialysis to combat the renal failure and if there are skin burns they should be washed with 1% copper sulfate now in case of death with phosphorus poisoning there can be two things one the death can be within 24 hours of toxicity or the uh, toxicity can follow its usual course with the period of remission in between now 24 hours poisoning will look like irritant poison the corrosive action of mucous membranes of pharynx esophagus stomach etc is seen cloudy liver and kidneys luminous bowel and stomach contents are seen now in the usual course there are two findings one is external body findings and the other is on dissection externally the body is wasted garlic like odor is observed 
jaundice and hemorrhage can be seen from the skin and various natural orifices now internally there is basically fatty degeneration and hemorrhage these are the two main culprits liver necrobiosis can be seen hemorrhage from heart and smooth uh, skeletal muscles hemorrhage sub endocardial hemorrhage can be seen and the stomach mucosa is uh, yellowish or grayish white now remember to preserve the viscera in saturated sodium chloride not in spirit because the luminosity of the sample can be lost finally the medical legal aspects of phosphorus acid poisoning it can be accidental in children because mm, phosphorus is used in fire crack crackers and rat pastes which can be accidentally ingest ingested by the children it can be homicidal because smell and taste can be hid in coffee or tea because uh, it is ideal for homicide because the symptoms are delayed death is also delayed and it may resemble liver liver disease now remember that phosphorus can be detected in putrefied body so even if a case goes unnoticed the body can be exhumed and phosphorus can be detected that's all